I'm Tiffany Watson, director of the Edward J. Lewis II Lawyers in the Classroom program. Thank you for joining us for the Lawyers in the Classroom program series. Today, we'll hear from Mr. Daniel Winters, an attorney volunteer, about his volunteer experience and why he joined the Lawyers in the Classroom program. Welcome, Daniel. Good afternoon, Tiffany. So I participate in the Edward Lewis Lawyers in the Classroom program because I was fortunate to work at Jenner and Block with Edward Lewis. Uh, I overlapped with Edward during my first uh, five years at the firm when he was championing the program and uh, uh, up until the time of his untimely death and as we know, the program has been renamed in his honor ever since. So I have known about the program for a very long time, although it has been within the past seven or so years that I've become much more uh, actively involved with it. So uh, if I can uh, answer a slightly different uh, question and talk about the first two lessons that uh, I have taught at the school that I'm currently working with, which is the Franklin Arts Center in Old Town. I've completed uh, uh, my first two visits. And on those two visits, I've done two different First Amendment lessons. Uh, first is the uh, hate speech uh, Charlottesville, uh, Virginia uh, lesson. Uh, and the second is uh, uh, the Tinker of uh, the Des Moines uh, case, an oldie uh, but goodie relating to the uh, Supreme Court case from the Vietnam uh, War era and students who wanted to wear a black armband to protest the war. And the reason I uh, like uh, use those two lessons is both First Amendment and I think they, they work well together. The uh, Charlottesville problem uh, is a good lesson to explore with the students the limits of the First Amendment so that they uh, uh, can learn that it doesn't mean that you can say anything you want, wherever you want, or any time that you want. And in fact, for that lesson, I uh, tweaked the, uh, the, uh, uh, the lesson a little bit to introduce a family feud game uh, into the lesson where I got to play uh, uh, is it Steve Harvey who currently hosts it? Yeah. Uh, and uh, have the students uh, uh, answer, uh, come up with examples of how uh, instances or examples of where speech is not protected by the First Amendment. And I found that using that game show format was sort of a fun way to get them interested and in thinking about uh, all of the, the different ways where the uh, First Amendment protection is not absolute. Uh, the Tinker case, or the Tinker lesson, I think fits well with that because we take the First Amendment again, and we again talk to them about how there are limits to it, but specifically doing it uh, in a context that I think the students can really relate to because it deals with what students, what First Amendment rights students like they have mm -hmm. inside uh, classrooms. Mm -hmm. So I think in uh, those uh, lessons, one of the uh, takeaways uh, that I try to emphasize is the importance of context, uh, having them understand that in those lessons and the specific cases uh, that they uh, involve, just like most cases in the real world, context matters, the specific facts matter. So um, I also get to sort of play law professor with them and tweak the facts just a little bit so that they can understand that a type of speech that is protected under one set of facts, if you change it a little bit, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it is not and should not be protected. So it's, I think it's important and useful for the students to understand context. Um, I think that it's also, uh, in, in this takeaway I think applies to all the lessons that I've used uh, in my years doing the program, uh, which is to help the students see that the importance of listening and understanding uh, uh, to the arguments, uh, to get them to think about the arguments that uh, uh, would work for both sides of the issue. Mm -hmm. Listen to those arguments for both sides. As you know, uh, Tiffany, one of the uh, uh, 
not a game, but one of the ways that we try to engage the students is with this human graph, where you'll have some of the students stand up at the front of the classroom, and then they will hear arguments for both sides. And if they're persuaded, they will move to mm -hmm. one side of the room or the other. And I think with these young students, it is really great for them to start to uh, appreciate that there are arguments often on both sides of an issue and to listen to them and be open to being persuaded and possibly moving to the right or to the left side of the room. Um, I think a last uh, sort of uh, takeaway from those two lessons that I was speaking about is the uh, role that the ACLU played in both of those cases. So they both represented the, uh, the marchers in Charlottesville when the city initially revoked their permit uh, to have their rally or protest, and then represented Mary Beth Tinker in the Devon case. And uh, I'd like for the students to understand that lawyers often uh, were defending, you know, important principles. And sometimes you're doing that in the context of representing clients who might not be that uh, 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 that you're not super comfortable with, but yet, um, uh, and again, in that case, the ACL, you representing them because the cause, those First Amendment issues and principles were so important. So I think those were some of the, uh, the, uh, the takeaways that I tried to, uh, that I think they took from those lessons. Um, lots of ways. Um, one, it's fun. I, <laughs> really enjoy being around uh, these great school students and they always lift my spirits and when I leave the classroom I'm always energized. Uh, I think the students uh, for the most part are happy to see me. Now that could be because I'm a break from their routine and I'm sort of like being uh, when I was in school and the teacher would show you a film strip or something like that, some, some, some break. But at least when I come into the classroom, it seems like they're happy and excited to see me, which is nice. And I find that many of the students are, are somewhat intrigued by having a lawyer in, the, in their classroom and think that lawyers like me are cool. And it's sort of nice to, uh, uh, to experience that. Uh, as you know, Tiffany, for uh, many of the students that I have had the uh, pleasure of uh, working with through the program, uh, I'll often ask them uh, on the front end, how many of them know a lawyer? And uh, often not that many hands go up. Uh, so it's sort of neat being, for many of them, the first lawyer that they've got to meet. Um, so those are uh, some of the reasons that I think the program is so uh, important and uh, why I have enjoyed uh, participating in it over the years. So it's hard to choose, but I'll, uh, just to give you one, back in <laughs> fall of 2017, when I was uh, partnering with uh, Mr. Joe Becker at the Alcott Elementary School. And Joe was a terrific teacher partner and uh, what really made working with his classroom so fulfilling for me is that he would time my visits when he was working with the students, preparing them for their constitution test. Mm -hmm. And anyways, on my third and last visit with, uh, with his students, he said, make sure you save some time at the end of the class because we want to share something with you. And what, uh, what, uh, what they shared is that he had to help the students prepare for the Constitution test and building off some of the lessons that we had done together had assigned them to uh, create a song uh, to sort of help them. Uh, the point was to help them remember the first, uh, the Bill of Rights and the first 10 amendments and, and what they are. And he then, you know, had a, a couple of the of the kids uh, uh, present their songs, and it was so amazing hearing that. I, I won't uh, torture you by trying to recreate those songs, although I think I've shared with you uh, a recording, so you've heard it. So, as I said earlier, when I leave my visits to the different classrooms, I'm always energized and feeling good. But when I left um, Mr. Becker's class that morning after hearing those songs, I had a really big smile on my face. 
Yes, I can imagine. Yes, I do recall um, you you sharing the recording with me, and that was so fantastic. And it just goes to show um, the connection you've made with the students um, and just um, the transfer of knowledge that you were able to do with the students. So that's so fantastic and such a great story. And thank you again. Thank you so much, Daniel, for sharing your thoughts, for sharing your experiences. And we're you know how happy I am that you're, you're a part of the Lawyers in the Classroom program. So thank you so much. To learn more about the Lawyers in the Classroom program, please go to www.chicagobar.org slash chicagobar slash LIC.